Hi and welcome to this new video and this is part three of the splines video and in this one I'm going to show you some little tricks and things you can do with splines that I haven't covered so far. So with a spline I've just put one in here already this is just a straight line spline. Obviously you can move the balls up above the ground and the gate will again orientate with the spline based on the angle that you that you have it at and also if you press dot with a full stop key it will bring that point back down to ground level so that's worth knowing let's put a couple of cones on here so I'm just going to use an ordinary yellow cone here so we put one there and we're going to move this out to the side and put another one the other side I'm going to move that out oops selected the wrong thing move that out to the other side. Now in this example what I'm doing here is a track design where I want cones running either side of my gate and to do that you can just quite literally select two items like this and press Control A and then press delete to get rid of your original items and now you have a kind of runway effect for your track with your gates in the middle. So, and you can do that with any number of objects and it will just clone them down the line if wherever you've put them, you could put floor cones, you could put some fences, whatever you want, you can clone it down the line. Now what I didn't do in the last video was show you how to use the object repeat distance, so let's just remove everything off of here except that one cone there. So this one cone is still on, on our line, which I can show by moving it with the square brackets. This is an easy check to see if something is on a spline is just select it and press the square bracket keys and if it moves around then it's on the spline. So if I was to press Control A now we get our 1.5 meter spacing like so. So let's just get rid of those again and now we'll put four up here and I press Control A and now I'm getting four meter spacing so that's just how this box works and if I delete those again and I come in here and I put 0.3 30 centimeters press control A and I get loads of cones okay so that's that part of it let's get rid of this spline here so I'll do a control is it shift D to get rid of that get rid of this cone. So this is another common scenario, two gates side by side and this is a power loop situation so you want the player to come in this gate, power loop and then go through that gate and there's not an easy way to show the person flying this that this is what they're supposed to be doing. So with splines you can do that. Now in the past we've had the power loop sign some people may have seen in tracks this is the power loop sign so it's power in the middle loop around the outside so power loop that's what that means some people may not have realized it but that's the symbolism power and loop so if you see that it means it's a power loop uh, but we don't need to do that anymore because we've got splines to help us with this now so if I go all the way to the end here and get a spline so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be coming to get above this so I can draw this. We're going to be coming out of this gate and then power looping going through this one. So I'm going to draw my spline in. So basically we're going to come out of here. We're going to come up in a power loop and then we're effectively going to be coming round and then back through this gate here and that's just finished there. Now obviously it's drawn this spline on the ground because by default it draws down onto the ground but we don't actually need to do that with splines we can raise them up so I can bring this one up and I can bring this one up and this one and you kind of see where I'm going with this bring this one up one and let's kind of get some a bit more shape to this power loop. This one needs to be a bit higher. Bring this one up a bit. Start getting a 
look at this from a from the front so this is where you can kind of see where where things may not be quite right so this one back here obviously needs to go that way a bit and this one here needs to come this way a bit like so this one also needs to come this way a bit Okay, so now we're kind of getting towards the shape we want. Obviously, it's not a very good loop yet, so what we want is this one to come in a bit. This one needs to go up. This one needs to go up a bit as well. You can see the spline is kind of adjusting its, its shape all the time as I'm doing this. So yeah, this is not too bad. Well, obviously you can spend more time on this. Um, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So once you've made your kind of shape that you want here for this power loop, let's move this one on the ground like that. And I've got another point really. Let's put another one in here. Just move that one. Uh, not too bad. Right, if we go back to the neon section there's a new little group of objects in here, these ones here, and these are glow spheres, they don't have any collider on them so you can't crash into them. And what they're designed for is because they're a complete sphere they can be viewed from any angle so you can get one of these and put them on the line like that and then give it a spacing of say half a metre Select that, press Ctrl A, Shift H to hide my line, my spline. And now you can see that when you come in to fly this, you've got a real sense of where you're supposed to be going. Because you've got a, a guide. Uh, obviously, in, in this instance, I've probably overdone it a bit with the number of points in my spline, but you get the idea. This allows you to draw shapes in the air for your quad flyers to follow so they know where your track is going and also this gives you a good idea of when you're doing your power loop as to where you are because you can follow these balls around in the air uh, to make sure you don't overshoot and get your shape right. So that's um, another use for splines is to create uh, a shape like that. The other thing you can do with splines is you can use them, you can draw a spline across, uh, not in this scenery particularly, um, but on a terrain where you've got variation in height, you can draw your spline so that you get the spline flowing across the, the terrain, just put points in where your terrain changes height um, and press dot to make sure that all, each point is at the height of the terrain and then populate it with cones, then delete the spline, select all the cones and press dot again and then your cones will be layered perfectly along the surface of the terrain. So that's another way of using splines to very quickly lay down things like cones on a, on a complex shape. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. Uh, part three and uh, I hope it's given a decent overview of the new spline functionality.